Hi, this is your host Apnil Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Newsroom and today we have with us once again Uri Bach, Executive Vice President of Product at Salt Security. Uri, it's great to have you back on the show. Great, great being back. Thank you. And today we are going to talk about Salt Security's integration with CrowdStrike. Uh, before we, of course, deep dive into this uh, partnership or you know integration, let's quickly talk about um, Salt Security from modern world, uh, the kind of challenges it's facing when it comes to security and what role is SALT playing there? And then we'll see the role of CrowdStrike. So SALT security uh, is really all about helping people that develop software enjoy the huge benefit of modern frameworks such as API first microservices without taking additional risks. So we want them to develop quickly. We want them to be efficient. We want them to be able to provide value to their customers. And our job is to make sure that they do not expose themselves to any security risk as they're doing that. And there's definitely a lot of uh, activity and interest by threat actors uh, in API as a way to, uh, uh, to steal data, as a way to cause damage. Uh, so there's a lot, I think, today uh, awareness that this is another aspect of risk uh, that needs to be carefully managed. When it comes to partnership with the uh, CrowdStrike, this is not the first time. Can you just quickly give us uh, a kind of, you know, an overview of your rela existing relationship and then we'll talk about the extension of or expan expansion of this partnership. We've had a long-standing relationship with uh, CrowdStrike, obviously uh, an innovative leader within the security space. Uh, at some point, that relationship actually evolved into them investing uh, in salt security. And for us, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing validation uh, that an emerging company uh, uh, of our size uh, is able to garner the interest and have the, uh, the faith of, uh, of a significant player, or probably the significant player in the security market uh, with CrowdStrike. Uh, and that relationship helped us uh, increase our reach, be able to reach a wider uh, customer base, uh, expand our own visibility into the bigger uh, security threat landscape. And really what we've done recently is take that relationship to the next level uh, by helping operationalize API security uh, with closer integration with CrowdStrike. So we uh, at Salt Security, I believe, do a good job of telling you here are specific threats that you should care about from an API perspective. Here's how threat actors are targeting you. Here's how you need to strengthen your defenses. Here's how you need to respond to certain things. However, as you as you know probably uh, better than anyone, it's a team sport, right? Nobody's looking to have a security tool. They're having they're looking to have a security program, and they're looking for uh, security tools to work for them within their environment. They're not looking for those things to be standalone. And really what we've done with, with CrowdStrike is once we're able to identify accurate telemetry, hey, here's some threat activity, here are some threat actors that are actually targeting you, we feed that into the CrowdStrike ecosystem and that really unlocks amazing capability in, in order to be able to respond to it. And that attack may also have other aspects that are not API specific, which CrowdStrike doesn't have visibility into. And we've really gotten feedback from customers. This has really increased the operational value our ability to respond to things. Uh, it's made our teams very comfortable with the technology because we're already comfortable with CrowdStrike and we know how to, we have playbooks and we know how to operate within the CrowdStrike ecosystem. And having SALT telemetry as part of that uh, is just something that's a lot, it's very valuable from an operational perspective. Can you also talk about, we discussed this in our last interview as well, emerging threats that you are seeing there? We've actually uh, have recently published, I believe since we last talked, some uh, really interesting research where Salt Labs, that's the research uh, uh, arm of, uh, of Salt Security, was able to identify a, a new attack vector that allows uh, uh, threat actors to take over accounts using OAuth, specifically social logins, and for me, that was interesting, not just because of the technicality of it, just because of the companies being impacted. So if you read our research, some of the largest enterprises in the world actually implemented their authentication in a way that would make them vulnerable to this problem. So it's not a theoretical problem, it's a real problem, and it's a real problem of very large companies, very secure work companies. It was very interesting for us just because API is an emerging space even mature security shops don't always have the right types of uh, protections and controls in place in order to 
uh, prevent threat actors from coming in, and threat actors are aware of that. So, of course, they would go in and do and, and try to target areas that are less mature from a security perspective. And when we talk about API security, I also want to talk about one of the hottest or at least most talked about technology these days, which is generative AI. And that is going to be all API driven. Um, talk about, let's talk about uh, generative AI also. At the same time, a lot of organizations, a lot of companies, security companies, they have started to leverage generative AI in their products also. Of course, it still needs human intervention, but let's look at generative AI from both perspective uh, as a protecting generative AI and using generative AI to protect. First of all, we are uh, heavily invested in different AI technologies, and we look at it uh, from three different aspects. First of all, can it make our detection capabilities, our learning capabilities better? And it can. We are seeing significant opportunities to actually be more accurate in detecting threat activity, uh, in identifying legitimate activity. So that's one aspect for us is not new. We've, we've actually been leveraging this technology for a while. The second, and this is really interesting, we are seeing a significant increase in the number of new APIs being released. And when we talk to our customers and say, hey, how come you move from releasing three, four new APIs, functionalities, value for your customers uh, in a month to, uh, to, to 20, 100, our developers are using AI. So it's a lot easier today to develop uh, applications and specifically a a APIs. So we're actually seeing this technology being operationalized at customers, which is actually causing, uh, giving them value, of course, more APIs, but it's also a security challenge, right? So you're moving from like having three new types of attack surfaces that you need to monitor in a month to having 20, 60, 100. Uh, and the third thing that we're seeing is there is specific interest in understanding um, uh, API traffic that is either going out to AI applications specifically what sensitive data goes out to those applications. Is it authorized, right? Uh, and also uh, how AI is being leveraged within those, uh, uh, within the internal APIs of an enterprise. It is a risk. It is a risk that security organizations are now trying to get a handle on. So we are really seeing that be top of mind and really where it comes to, uh, where we see the, that the huge impact of the technology, it's actually helping our customers accelerate what they do and it's, driving us to also be faster what we do, right? So we need to be faster in terms of identifying new uh, attack vectors that are created by this technology, being able to manage it, being able to teach the AI, hey, this is how you build safer code, right? Which which is something that is an exercise that is actually easy to do because AI is a learning algorithm. It's kind of a tricky question because we do live in an API-driven or API-centric world. So when we look at modern kind of society or economy, it's all about APIs. Um, how much, I mean, we have done this in, like, with you uh, on your reports, you know, that, you know, organizations aren't even prepared. How prepared do you see organizations are today to deal with, you know, API risk and how mature their API security posture is? So first of all, like in all things, there are, you know, different, uh, uh, there are variations. We, we do see some uh, shops that are very mature, uh, that really have got a handle on it. But to be honest, the majority of people that we talk to have spent a lot of time and energy in digital transformation. They've moved to an API uh, uh, first architecture. It accelerated uh, their ability to deliver value to their customers. And then there's, oh, we also need to handle security. And they are sometimes the, the question that we get asked, can you tell me which APIs I have? Because that would be the first thing that I need to know, which is not necessarily very mature. Can you help us write a policy? Right? What? should be the security policy that relates to APIs. Uh, and then could you help us identify some high level gaps? Like what are the basic things? We're just on a call today and the customer is asking, it's like, if we do one thing and we are we have we have very limited capacity, what is that you salt would recommend that we do out of all of the insights that your platform can provide? And really what we said, hey, let's start with the fact that sensitive data, which could be PII or PCI or, or, or bank accounts or whatever it is, must be authenticated. So our system actually flagged the fact that you have that. That is a very easy target for attackers, right? Unauthenticated uh, API endpoints with uh, data that they can steal. So so we, we recommend that you take care of that. Then I think, and I think not everybody's there, it's like, okay, now let's operationalize really threat detection and response, right? So if, if, if you're actually, if you're being targeted, if there is an attack, you need to be aware of that attack, you need to understand the attack and you need to, uh, to respond to the attacks. But the short answer is, and it is changing, but the level of maturity uh, is still relatively low uh, with many of the customers that we talk to. When it comes to maturity, does it have to do 
with either the size of the company, scale of the company, or the age of the company that newer companies may, but then there are a lot of companies who are born in the cloud native era, they might be aware of this. And then there may be a lot of companies who are still, uh, you may have, hey, this is a mature company, the bigger uh, Do you also see any correlation when it comes to how mature their security posture is with the size and scale? Yeah, gr great question. Uh, we see two things that would drive a customer to be more mature. And the first, uh, and we, while we do live in an API-driven economy, if it is a, a company that was formed in later years and, and in general built its business on APIs, uh, usually they would be more mature because they're dealing with this problem for five years, seven years now. A lot of the uh, companies that built their technology before are just now uh, completing the digital transformation to help take the critical application, the ones that have the most revenue. I'm not talking about some outliers that then suddenly it becomes a business critical mission to secure APIs, and those are the less mature ones because, and frankly, just like everything, right? If you spend eight years doing something, you're probably going to do it better than if this is your first year. The second thing that would drive maturity, and that's unfortunate, is an attack. So we see uh, companies that we may have talked to historically and we're saying, hey, it's not a big focus for us. We're not, we're, we haven't really mapped out that attack vector, and then we get called in. Uh, a few months later, and suddenly it becomes a huge focus, and we're seeing a lot of uh, we're seeing a lot of expertise uh, being built. We're seeing the program really scale up, and we're asking why. And it said because we had an incident, we felt the pain, and now uh, we're bringing in outside talent, we're bringing in consultants, we're putting in the right tooling, and they become mature very fast. So I think it's really those. It's either like the preemptive business driver. You identify, hey, this is a business critical thing for me. I'm going to spend time. That takes time or you actually feel the pain, uh, and there have been some high, uh, some high profile attacks out there, some of them have, have hit the news, that of course forces uh, any organization to drastically mature what they're doing for this specific space. At one time, we also felt that cyber warfare will become a reality, and you know companies started to prepare against that. Um, how right now we are going through two massive wars you know, in Europe, how do you see, uh, cyber security or cyber warfare playing out there? Uh, we have seen an increase uh, uh, in attacks against, uh, uh, first of all, the war in Ukraine happened. We've seen an increase in, uh, uh, in attacks. Uh, uh, the, the conflict here in the Middle East has happened. We've seen an increase in attacks. We've actually, uh, even for me personally, I try to access a website of one of the banking services I use. It was just offline. Just said, sorry, we're at, we, are, we have been taken offline. We're under attack. Uh, we're definitely seeing that. We're seeing an increase in the level of uh, sophistication and intensity of the uh, of those attacks, and we are seeing cybersecurity become uh, an essential part of critical infrastructure. Right. So when when uh, we're in Israel, where I live in, is really looking at how do we secure ourselves. It's not just the physical uh, borders. It's also how do we make sure that our critical infrastructure, all of it is, is software, all of it is API driven, by the way, right? Electricity, uh, mobile phones, all of that is uh, the underlying infrastructure is API. How do we make sure that that is able to survive uh, uh, to survive an attack? And I think it's, again, it's an evolving, uh, uh, it's an evolving situation where there's both increase in the sophistication and, uh, and volume of the attacks, but also in the maturity uh, of the defenders and our ability to uh, put effective controls. And, and really where you want to be is not necessarily have an attack and respond to it. You want to reduce the attack surface. You want to become an unattractive target. You want to make it hard for the bad guys uh, to act against you. And we're definitely seeing some progress, but to be honest, there's a, there's a way to go. How sophisticated these API attacks are becoming? And also, are you looking like I talk to a lot of security folks and they talk about things like ransomware attacks, which are, you know, totally different. But are you seeing, you know, where it's less about attacking and taking things down, but it's also holding them hostage. I mean, if you look at hospital, it's less about giving my data back. They are more worried about, hey, don't release it. Again, a great question. And we're seeing two types of, 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 uh, of threat actors. Uh, the ones that are economically motivated, uh, for the most part, are just trying to find the, uh, a very simple vulnerability. They're just scanning for something that's unauthenticated. 
as what's called a zombie or rogue API point, something that somebody developed and just forgot about, and they're very opportunistic, right? So they would really go target by target. If they get a, uh, we, we see the reconnaissance activity. It is actually something that you can see how they're trying to map out and test different things. And they would just go after uh, what they would consider to be a soft target. And it's not incredibly sophisticated. And it's also not incredibly hard to put controls in place uh, for, for not to be affected by those things. It's really about just not making yourself an attractive target for them, block reconnaissance attempts, uh, show yourself as a hardened target, and they would move on. Uh, targeted attackers, and we're also seeing those things, have uh, really increased their sophistication. Uh, they're doing business logic attacks, meaning that they're not just looking for an inherent vulnerability within the code, which is something you can ultimately detect and, and block. They're trying to find flaws within how your applications are built and your APIs are built in order to manipulate them in order to gain some benefit, financial benefit, cross damage, steal data, whatever it is. And we are seeing a huge amount of sophistication being put into that. They're really mapping those applications. They're understanding their business logic. Uh, and uh, uh, and they're giving, uh, you know, they're, it's a real challenge uh, to understand those attacks. It's a real challenge to effectively respond to those attacks. And definitely there's been a higher level of sophistication, I would say. Really in the past two years, we've seen uh, them up their game and also employ a lot more automation and AI uh, as part of that, right? So it's like a, there's a phishing email involved. I would, you can even see like that seems to be something that's like really tailored to the person and that's probably AI driven. Uh, uh, and we're really seeing them use a lot of uh, sophisticated automation that allows them to scale out those attacks. <clears throat> we are at the end of 2023, almost is November and you know, um... If you look back at this year, and then if you look at 2024, from operational security perspective, do you feel that you know we are moving in the right direction? We're in 2023, we did not see that many attacks. In 2024, uh, the things will get better, or you're like, no, we still have some concerns. So look, I think, uh, and maybe I'm not the right person to talk about it, but the bigger uh, war uh, against cybercrime, I would need to say that ultimately, you kind of look at the bottom line, we're not doing a great job. The, the cybercrime economy is very successful, it's growing. Each one of those conflicts actually throws more people uh, that may have certain technical skills into that loop. Uh, I would say this, uh, protecting legacy applications uh, is extremely hard and it is really a challenge to put controls in place or to identify some of those attacks and respond to them. I think the upside of uh, an API uh, architecture and an API first uh, approach, it is actually easier to secure that environment because it is easier to uh, to update and make sure that you have the right uh, the right software that's not vulnerable. It's easier to monitor them. It's easier for engineering to identify specific areas that need to improve. Uh, so actually for a modern uh, for a company that's moved to a modern uh, architecture, uh, and has a program in place, I would say that uh, uh, the pain that they're experiencing is actually lower. And I do, I do definitely see that they're making progress and are able to see less attacks or drastically reduce the impact of an attack, right? An attack, an, an attempt of an attack within itself is not, is not where you have the impact. The impact is if they're successful. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely seeing some improvement and I think it has to do with better uh, security technology, but also better technology in general, right? A lot of our problems are the legacies, right? A lot of the legacy operating system, the legacy code, uh, that is really where it's very hard to, uh, to make an impact. Let's just wrap this up uh, uh, from the lens of this partnership, CrowdStrike, and SALT and the challenges that you talked about, how this partnership is going to kind of ease some of the pains of security teams or developer teams. I think where this partnership really uh, helps security teams, a lot of them are really looking to standardize on a certain stack of technology. They're looking to operationalize that technology and having a tight integration within the CrowdStrike ecosystem really makes it easier for people to consume it, right? So say I've already built this whole uh, operation around CrowdStrike, and now I can feed in an additional telemetry that sheds a light specifically on, uh, on threats that have to do with my APIs. That's shorter time to value, it's easier to consume, it's low effort, and it's also better risk management because it gives me like the bigger picture, right? Not just the API, but also some other aspects. And I think really it's about uh, shortening time to operational success for us.
Excellent. Uh, Uri, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about you know the changing API security landscape, the partnership. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again soon and also stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Always a pleasure.